Hello friends, my name is Kishan and welcome you in this video tutorial. In previous video tutorial, I have shown you how to post messages on the JMS queue, right? So basically we had uh, posted uh, three messages, right? So when you post messages on the queue, then uh, and we'll, when we, you try to read from the queue, then uh, this works like a first in first out. So this is our first message which, which we had posted, right? And uh, and uh, this is our second message, right? And finally we had a third message when we had uh, uh, typed quit. So when we have typed quit, then we have uh, quitted from the main method, and that's why the, uh, this is a quit. So these are the three messages uh, I have right now on the message queue so these messages uh, I want to read from the client program and you can see the different uh, options you have if you want to export some messages then you can, you can export manually over here if you want to uh, uh, sorry exp if you want to export this messages then you can export this message you have a checkbox you select all messages and you can export if you want to import then you can of course import you have a move if you want to delete some messages etc you have over here right so now these messages I want to uh, read from the client program. Once you read these messages, then these messages will be deleted from your uh, uh, queue, right? So here I have written a client program uh, message, JMS queue message receiver. So I'm going to run this message and will read all these messages from the queue. And after that, I'll try to explain you about this project, about this client program. So let me run this message which is this class is having a main method which will uh, try to connect to the queue and that will read all messages available in the queue now you can see saying that JMS ready to receive messages right this is SOP just uh, I have printing from the client program and uh, message received this is the first message which is coming from the uh, queue and this is the second message and this is the third message all three messages we have read from the queue and if you go to the queue and uh, uh, if you go to the option it's called uh, this here and uh, or we can see you can go to the again administrator console go to the JMS module and you can again navigate to the queue and here this is our queue and go to the monitoring and monitoring select this queue show messages and you can see there is no message now because uh, uh, our client program has read all messages from the queue right so let's try to understand this client program so how to write the this client program to read messages from the queue so I have written a class JMSQ message receiver and that implements message listener and this message listener is having a single method is called on message this is a this is the this is a uh, callback method which will have to implement right so on message I have implemented and this text argument as a message and here what we have done message we are taking instance of text message if this message is type of text messages then just we are type casting into the JMS text messages All right so just we are type casting into the string if that is not text messages then we are type just we are calling to a string method on it and we are just printing the this message which is retrieving from the uh, JMS queue if text message comes with the quit that was the last our uh, messages then just we are setting this flag quit equal to true right initially that was false means uh, consumer does not have to quit and once we set the false and we are calling the notify method just we are notifying the main thread so main thread here just keep watching if uh, this comes with the uh, if this comes with the false value then this becomes true and that will go to the weight if thus this comes to the true value then uh, true value then this uh, uh, will become false and this will not go to the weight state but once this is coming to the false then this will 
uh, go to the uh, this will becomes true and this will go to the wet state so, right so that's the agenda that the main use case of this uh, quit flag so, and now you can say we have an init method just like a uh, uh, JMS uh, message standard JMS queue message standard so this init method basically init uh, and close method these are the method we are calling from the main method so init method is to initialize the resources so first of all in JMS util I have created all required resources like queue connection factory queue connection and queue connection we have started right and finally we have created a queue session and this queue session is going to return to the caller so this is a pretty straightforward method queue session is returning over here and we called a lookup method on the context and we are, we are passing the queue name and just type cast into a queue uh, we created this we got the queue session from the uh, from this method this method is returning and from queue session just we have created a queue uh, create receiver and we are passing the queue name to the receiver and queue receiver basically here in queue receiver just you are registering the listener right and listener because we want to as we know that uh, jms basically uh, deals with the asynchronous message right so if you use jms in your program then jms basically jms component will post the messages on the jms server and that will keep continue with the other business stuff right so that's why that is uh, assume that that is asynchronous not assumed but, but this is a guarantee this is a asynchronous message and if you want that to be uh, asynchronous message asynchronous uh, request to be performed then you will have to register this listener right so this listener is nothing but that this is instance of current class object why we are passing current class object because this class already implements message listener right so that is the object of listener if you create object of this class that works like a listener so just we are passing this object right and we have a closed method for cleanup operation so we are close closing QC receiver over here and we, there are some resources which we have initialized uh, in this method right and this uh, this object uh, we have declared on the class level so that uh, I can perform cleanup operation right so this operation these resources just I'm closing in the uh, cleanup method and this cleanup method I'm calling from the here and this method basically is responsible to uh, uh, close all resources right all open resources and here I just have created the object of this class right object of this class and we are just called we are just calling get in slice context and this method is basically returns as the initial context which already I have explained in the previous example now just I'm printing this message from this and I have used uh, a Q JMS Q receiver uh, just I am applying synchronization on this JMS Q, this object and when I found this is coming false then this statement becomes true and that will go to the uh, waiting state so if there is no message to consume then uh, consumer has to go in the wait state else uh, else on message on message will be keep getting called by the framework itself right and you get the message right from the queue so that's all about this uh, uh, JMS Q message receiver right and in previous video I have already explained uh, JMS uh, Q message sender so that's all about this JMS stuff and here we are and end up with the uh, I mean these two classes which basically responsible to uh, post the JMS messages on the uh, JMS queue and another is a receiver class which basically reads messages from the JMS queue right uh, one thing I would like to share with you here I have basically what I have done I have basically uh, JMS sender uh, basically I have created a uh, basically text message but you are you have provision to create a lot of kind lot of messages right so here you have you can create either text messages or you have provision to create different kind of messages like uh, and those methods you can get it over here like uh, you can see here map message you can create i think uh, create map message so what i'll do i can show you here itself 
so here you have a sender right if you check this uh, you have a different kind of so here you can uh, create sorry sorry this, this method must be this session and here you can create different kind of message so here you have a lot of different kind of messages to to create right so you can create a different kind of even you can create message generic message you can create right you can create a map message even which holds the key value pairs you can create a bytes messages a lot of kind of messages is there opportunity to create right so here just i have shown you an example of the text messages basically responsible to uh, post the text messages right and here uh, uh, if you go to the console here and uh, here if you go to the genus module and here if you go to here now inside the queue uh, there are a lot of a uh, lot of things you can a uh, lot of things you can uh, override or you can go to the settings and you can set a lot of things like priority overrides minus ones means uh, you, what is the meaning of minus one they have given so over here in detail so if you press control and if you click over here then they have explained about this property so as per your business logic you will have to set this uh, property right and if you look into the some other stuff like there are lo lot many things you can uh, set it over here right you can you have opportunity to set a lot of attributes and here you can see so there is maximum message size so that is in I think bytes so even you can increase the size which uh, you can push into the queue so there are a lot of things you can go go to the weblogic server and you can see what are things uh, uh, maybe customize or uh, as per the your business requirement that can be uh, modified right so there are many more things are available on the weblogic server and like what are the value you can override what are the things you can how you can override so as per the setting this will this works so that's all i have in this video tutorial so i hope you understood uh, this JMS concept and uh, this code I am going to put on the github and github location I will uh, specify in the video description itself uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching this video